ego. It's like I even found myself, you know, once I started finding out about it, and I was like, oh man, I started even just going, uh, looking outside of, of the Bible and actually focusing more on the ego and actually realizing that, that Christ, that was basically exactly what he was talking about, how to crucify the ego. Even though, uh, so he talks about that, but he doesn't really, um, uh, I guess, putting, putting much depth and emphasis on the ego altogether. It's like I actually started looking outside um, of the scriptures and, and actually seeing that okay, this is it. Actually, uh, there's ways that there's ways and methods, uh, you know, that you can um, do that righteously. You know, not in a state of where you're breaking any of the laws or anything like that. You know, really just knowing how to, uh, to let go of those certain thoughts, uh, knowing how to overcome them within your mind. Yeah, and uh, a lot of it stemmed from. Um, Something that was called uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. I actually done that when I was when I was younger, when I was going through a lot of my um, you know mental issues uh, in my early twenties. What does that consist of? Yeah, so cognitive behavioral therapy is like uh, knowing and and recognizing these thoughts and where they're coming from and learning how to um, overcome them. That's what CBT is. Right. And so I actually found myself looking back into that, and that these are all different methods of how to you know uh, crucify the ego. Um, but it's it's just funny because it, it directly relates to everything that Christ was saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. What he was teaching, and this is the thing with these churches, right? Because they don't they don't necessarily really talk in depth about the things like the ego and the flesh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, they they focus more so on directly something uh, to to tickle the ears of the listeners. Yeah. Yeah. You have some churches, oh, it's all different. You have some churches that talk about doctrine, mm. right? And they go purely into doctrine and um, a different theology. And then you've got other churches that go on peace and love and forget the commandments they're done away with. You yeah, know, all together, you know that's I mean? right. Mm. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, you got so many different churches that talk about so many different things, you know? Um... Yeah, it's like the, some of them just like it's either one way or the other. You know, that's what I've found. It's literally either one way or the other. We focus on those couple of scriptures that tell us that you know, um, you know, we need to focus everything on love. You know, it's all about love, and then we forget about uh, you know those little sins that we commit throughout the day, which are actually stopping us from building our relationship with you know with Christ. Yeah. Those are little things, and then and then and then like on the other end of the spectrum, it's like um, when you focus uh, too much on like the law, and that you start to puff yourself up, like Paul says, you know. The problem is, you see, you see this from Christ's point of view. Like, he's come and he's refined the law. He's come and he's um, he's taught it in a way that can't be purely based on actions mm. it's actually an inner work it's actually an inner working right that resides that stems from his spirit that's inside of you and if you don't have that spirit then you can't you can't convey you can't walk the way that he walked you know I'm under that, yeah. yeah because he he constantly like he he, he came and he showed the way and and it's like after he's left the earth, yeah. you have now the same hypocrites and Pharisees walking around trying to teach he taught this way, taught that way, and then it results in a heretical argument. Yeah, and it's like you can't you can't even say that if you don't have the, the, the fruits of his spirit yeah. inside yeah. you because yeah. you know, man, I was we were just talking about this like the other day, or maybe it was it yesterday. I was saying I was watching this argument between uh uh you know, um, you know, two. I don't know. If, yeah, I think one was a brother in Christ, and another one was a, you know, now having this battle, and now an going is, back an and Israelite, forth. An Israelite, an Israelite, Israelite, back and forth, and I was resonating to, I guess, what both of them were saying somewhat. More so, the uh, uh, Christian towards the end, because like the other one's argument was a bit like it was started becoming really racial and carnal. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, man, you know, it's a shame because that. In my head, I was just thinking, it was, it was putting me off. It was saying, you know, 
They're missing the whole point of the scriptures in the first yeah, place. Yes, yes. They're missing the whole point of yep. the gospel in the first place. It's not to, you know, not to uh, sit here bickering at each other. You know what I mean? So this is what this is what Christ wouldn't have wanted. This the bickering and the, and the you know what I mean? That, that's what you've got to think of. What what's he thinking of in that moment when he's looking down on this happening? What's he thinking? The whole time, exactly, man. he's probably just sh- shaking his head, you know. Yeah, it's like, especially when it's brethren as well, you know. Yeah, I mean? when, yeah. when we're meant to be like one in Christ, you know. Trying I mean? to set an example for the rest of the world, and now just pulling them apart because yeah. there's division. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a straight up, uh, it's a straight up shame, man. And that that's just one example, anyway. But we've all had personal experiences when we've, you know, we've been with others, and we've like, you know. Um, even even when we've we've like been that way in the past, um, yeah, yeah, you know. But yeah, like I was saying, you know, the the ego was probably the biggest development I found. You know, uh, learning what the Bible can do if you're not careful. You know, you can build that spiritual ego if you don't go through all that. If you don't go through all that um, trauma, um, you have to really figure out all the trauma that you've been through in your childhood. You have to go back and, and really go through that trauma and you have to uh, be at peace with it and you have to let it go. You know well, I mean? here's an interesting argument and, and it's like a battle, right? Because when we get baptised, we're immediately born with a new spirit, mm. right? And here's the thing, right? We've got that spirit inside of us, but our fleshly body isn't born again. Our fleshly body remains the same. So we have yeah. the same strongholds, the same desires, the same habits that we have to break. That's right. We have yeah. the same evil thoughts and inclinations. Same generational curses, dude. Same generational, same doubts. I'm fighting every single day. Same doubts in my mind, right? Self doubt. It may, makes day. sense now that while we're born again in the spirit, we're not born again in the flesh. So it's mm. a, that's the struggle. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the flesh that we always find ourselves having to crucify. Yep. That, yeah. That flesh having to crucify that flesh is a daily battle. You know. Yeah. Every day you wake up, it's, it's like, you know, you have to engage in that battle. And, yeah, well, those same generational um, curses, you know, they still, even though you get baptized, even though you've been given that new spirit, that like, uh, it's, it's like, yeah, you still have to find ways to heal from that trauma so you don't let it carry on into your spiritual life. Because it's yeah. going to stop your development in, in Christ and letting Him work and flow through you. you know? it's, it's habits. It's habits of the world and what we've been brought up to know and understand and um, all of the knowledge we've gained through um, heathen traditions, you know? Mm. Yeah, because the heathen way teaches you, you know, growing up, uh, uh, you know, you know from, from a standpoint where it's like, you know, you, you come from a good moral basis and... and you know, not to knock, you know, the other generations, it was just passed on through them and it's like, uh, religion was a big part of their their faith. It was a big part of their life and having faith, but they didn't actually realise it, um, the whole serious aspect behind it. And the, 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 the meaning of the words in the Bible literally like, yeah, no, nah, like his words are like a dead set and you can't, there's, there's no turning from, like that. that's his words, that's his judgment. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like what he says goes. 100%. So he's not in agreement with, with, with like, you know, this and that. It's for real. That, like, you can't be in agreement with it. You know? And this is where religion places God in a consumer type of category. They place him in a consumer category where you can try if you buy, if, if, um, if you know, if um, Christianity is not the way, then maybe you can go to Buddhism or you can go to Islam. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's So they place point. him into a... Um, through different doctrines, it's like a business strategy that these churches use in order to lure in consumers. Mm. You know what I mean? We know that consumer culture runs off the flesh, and um, and it's completely uh, contrary to the needs needs of the spirit, right? Um, Straight up, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's it's like sex. You, um, se- you know, sex of religion. So so Did then so then yeah. there's there's so then people who are a part of religions are categorized themselves. Right? Yeah, you become categorized. And, and, this right. is, and this is where the whole uh, religious spirit seem, you know, appears to get its name from because you have the, uh, you know what I mean? The yeah. Certain Christians that are um, 
yeah, that are the boring old men who smell, you know what I mean, type of thing. <laughs> where it's like they go to church and <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? It's like yeah, <laughs> and they're overly you just put it in a, in a like overly oh, righteous was, and yeah, I was expecting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but like, yeah, it's true. It's like. It's what it's it's what it does, you know. And hearing other people speak about it, oh, oh so this is what it was, you know. It's actually called like a religious spirit that people have. Because I never even knew of that until I heard it somewhere. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, right, that so that that's that's what it is. And I, I've found as well, you know, if you question something or you say something that's out of line with these people. They always straight up get razzed, man. You know. Yeah. Like that, that's, they'll, they'll just turn right. You trigger their emotions. Yeah, that's their not. Ego. That's not a normal. That's not a normal uh, reaction of someone who's got peace on the inside. Yeah, but you see, yeah. if you say something that triggers their ego, that's exactly right. Yeah. If you're if, if you're grounded in Christ, right? If, if you like, if you have that peace, like it says in Luke seventeen twenty one, if you have that kingdom of heaven within, like you're not going to get triggered so easy yeah. when people say something like that. You're going to straight up use that wisdom and discernment and think, all right, well, like, all right, he, this doesn't really line up with what I know. So, so I'll keep listening. And see, what I do, I, I give people the, I like to use my charity, right? I'll, I'll let people speak. Some people are good listeners, you know. Mm. That's, my, that's my career. That's what I do with my job. I'm a, I'm a producer. I've got a good ear. I, I like to, you know, hear people talk. I'm a listener. Um, you know, and then, and then it's like, you can give them and listen but it's like, I'm not necessarily going to agree with what you're saying. And, I, and I'm either going to correct it, or if you're straight up just acting out of line with me, I'm just going to be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, use that spiritual discernment. Just use my discernment, no worries. But as well, we're not taught, I believe as well, uh, according to scripture, um, that uh, that we're, we're actually meant to be continually, you know, I guess uh, open-minded or... Um, we, we have to constantly be in self-reflection ourselves. So it would be wrong in not listening to another person because, or another brother or, or, or sister, right? Because who, who's to say that they can't be angels from God trying to also lead you to receive revelation on their behalf, well, that's, on his behalf, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's, this is why we've got to treat other brothers and sisters as sons and daughters. And this is why the whole loving... Um, your neighbour as you love yourself is yeah. so important, right? It really is, yeah. Because, yeah, we're, we're all meant to be um, servants in Christ and receiving edification from one another. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And you know, as, as many um, people who like, may be like, following Christianity, right? And we know that like Christianity came from Constantine, like like the modern day Christianity we see. But man, I'm going to give these um Christians, I'm going to give them uh, their their dues. You know what I mean? Because that even though we might not agree on like you know for straight up, or you know I'll find out later on that you know uh, they may not be in agreement because you know they they just have been taught a different way. Man, you know when they show themselves to you they give you nothing but love and you can see that they're grounded in Christ you know what I mean and that's that's really um, that's really a blessing you know when you come across mothers and sisters like that and you yeah. and, you know you can like edify them and and or you know we can have those conversations but like you don't have to totally disregard them at the beginning you know what I mean because that's not um, no that's, that's not the right way you know you, don't, you don't treat people like that exactly and you don't look right. down on others unless you're helping um, like another person up, you never look down on someone else, you know? Yeah, exactly right. Unless you're helping them up 100%. And it's like, those people as well who have, and this is where Paul talks about these people who literally have, um, like, they they have that circumcised heart, regardless of the doctrine, you know what I mean, that they follow. Obviously, we know that there's only one doctrine to eternal life. Yeah. You know, but it's like, you have these you know, let's say the brother's wrong in some area of um, of doctrine, which it says not to go in. There's, you're not meant to have arguments. It's vain. It's vain. Paul speaks about it being in vain to have arguments on 
um, it's, it for, um, avoid arguments of foolish genealogy uh, genealogies or you understand yeah, yeah. the person talking about um, avoid contentions on mm. certain genealogies because it's all in vain are you, are you speaking in regards to um, avoid endless genealogies when he's talking about like, the uh, bloodlines getting too caught up in yeah yes yeah like that yeah mm. yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's very, very right. um, but you know like relevant. at the end of the day if the if that gentleman's got if he's got fruit that are if he's charitable loving like if he's giving all of his you know if he's donated you know so much money to helping other people you know and um or if he's been um you know just just he's been like a genuinely loving person all his life and you know naturally I mean, he's giving naturally you the, keeps the law you know what i mean in that he's way then giving you the fruits of the spirit yeah yeah then he's got more riches than someone who just argues all day about Doctrine. certain doctrines or looks down upon other people yeah has a closed mind or, or doesn't even want to approach another person out on the street and, and who spark thinks, a conversation and yeah i'm just saying because i keep these laws and you don't exactly you know I mean? that's, exactly that's dangerous man that, that's that's, yeah. that's that's powerful you know what i mean 100 percent. yeah it's, it's very dangerous when you, when you have that mindset and this all stems from the ego man all stems from the ego yeah yeah, because it's all ego based. That and it's like builds up and up. Competition, and up. man. It's all competition. It's a similar sort of mentality. Competition, man. You know, like yeah, and it's like you know, not to mock, like because it's just naturally you know in females' nature to, to I guess be more competitive, um, like with one another. And that's not to mock them at all. But it's like especially with males, it's like you shouldn't be comparing your. Uh, walk or like um, to to or being in co- on competition with other men no you know what I mean that's just straight up it's, it's like a feminine trait you know what I mean I see that so much these days like Ooh. even online and like there's other people just so quick to finger point at, at others you know it's like t- take the finger and point it at yourself man you, you've got three fingers pointing back at you 100% you know I mean? and, and, and Christ said straight up like you said his words are just so potent you know the greatest will be your servant and the, and, and the least will be the greatest and the greatest will be the least. Mm. You know, you're not even going to consider these people, these brothers and sisters who are so humble. You're not even going to consider them as, you know, they're, they're totally contrary to what the world considers as being the greatest people, you know. Because of what, yeah, that's right. What a beautiful level of humility that is, you know. Yeah. And that's something that we always have to carry and crucify that, 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 you know, totally crucif- crucifies that pride. And, and it's like, yeah, and it does. And it's like he who sacrifices his life for the brothers, you know what I mean? Uh, there's another quote. Uh, yeah, he who lay, lays down his life for his brother. Exactly. Be meditating on this most recently. He who lays down his life for, for the brother mm. is, um, yeah. I can't remember what like, the full verse is, but yeah, we're meant to lay down our life for our brothers and sisters, you know. We're not meant to be having strife and contention and heresies between one another. We're not, we're not. Especially yeah. we're, we're meant to be shining lights and you, when you're looking down upon other people who are meant to be sons and daughters of your father, your heavenly father, how can you say that you're caring and nurturing them? How are you loving them as you love yourself? If you look upon people who are stuck in certain, you know, if you're just looking at other brothers and sisters in the world and you're seeing their shortcomings or you're making a preconceived judgment yeah that's how right. can you yeah, yeah, yeah. how can you come to that conclusion if you're loving your neighbor as you love yourself if you that love yourself right. you're not going to you're not going to um just ignore certain aspects of your life that are taking you away from the most high so Straight, you know, out of a loving right. heart why can't you approach the other you know the other individual who's at fault or you know the, the disappointing and, and concerning thing is oh, I've recognised a lot of these things from so called Christians yeah you know what I mean that's, that's what I mean like I can disappointing thing in my walk yeah in my walk so far with um with the most high it's like in my time that being baptised in the truth I've had a harder time to be honest connecting with Christians and people who say that they're baptised or 
you know, keep the commandments of God or wow, that's deep. That's then, deep. Then, then actually with atheists, you know what I mean? Then, then actually having conversations about God with athe- Isn't that atheists, man, you know what I mean? Because you know what, I can sit back and I can agree with what you're saying mm. right now. Even though we, we, we've at different points found the most high, yeah. you know, <laughs> I agree with, with what you're saying. I was saying to you, and then, but then there's like some people that you just connect with on an amazing level, you know. Hundred percent. I know we both had those people in our lives. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But they're but they're 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 a rarity, aren't they? Yeah. They're a rarity. Gone. I was saying to the brother I was with recently that there's a there's a part of the world they call the thirty and the forty that hasn't had the gospel preached to them. Um, I believe 40, it's the okay. thirty by forty, some some sort of ratio. Um, they categorize uh, this part of the world as being a part of the world that hasn't had the gospel ever preached to them. These communities don't know about Christ, have never even heard of them, some of these communities, right? And there's literally missionaries going out to these parts of the world on extremely dangerous outreach trips where they're being persecuted. We're talking about countries like uh, India and um, uh, would be like uh, like. Afghanistan, um, certain okay. parts of the world where, you know, China, communist countries, where these um, people, you know, they, they apparently, some of these communities never heard of Christ before, you know, his walk on the earth, um, let alone Christianity in itself. Mm. And I thought to myself, you know, while there's such urgency to go and preach there, what about the Western nations who have heard about Christ who, are, who proclaim to be Christians, right? This huge part of the world. And yet, they, they, they've been deceived. They're, they're a part of that Matthew 24. Um, many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and will deceive many. Yeah. There are, what about these people in the Western nations that we're among who are so deceived and are under the spirit of a strong delusion because of the religious spirit? What about those people? How 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 much yep. how much of an urgent time is it for them who are who are these people under religious spirits because of the different sects of Christianity, Catholicism, um oh, so ba- many, Baptist, uh, Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witness, uh, Mormonism, yeah. Uh Baptist. Yeah. Uh, Christadelphians. Chris, yeah, yeah. Uh, Episcopalians. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um yeah, it ends, just goes it? on. It just yeah. goes on and on, you know? Like, uh, yeah, S- SDAs as well, which is so close. A lot of these, a lot of these religious SDAs, branches yeah, yeah. Yeah. are very, very close to the truth, you know. Yeah, but some, unfortunately, some there's are, but, yeah, yeah. But it's like that's how deep the deception goes, you know. Why? Why would you need to divide? You know, uh, just say, let's say Hinduism was the truth, right? Why would you need a hundred? thousand different sects for for hinduism exactly right yeah why yep. do they need yep. to divide christianity into a thousand different s- sects is that because uh there could be a a, uh, a very big chance that the bible um actually may be the truth exactly right why why are they trying to to uh cover they're, they're trying to cover up something very easily yeah and, and and someone in this book right here is responsible for doing that one hundred percent. That's and that's the adversary, the Satan. Yeah, yeah. It's transformed into an angel of light. So, yep. and this is where the urgency in the Western world is also just as much of an urgency. I feel as it is going to these places like India, you know, um, China, mm. you know, maybe uh, Korea, perhaps. Yeah. All of these places that have never heard of Christ themselves, because this spirit of delusion. Not that I'm taking anything away from these lost souls that don't know him right we pray for these people but yeah this please. spirit of delusion is so deep that you it's very hard to crack a lot of people who are under religious spirits who have been indoctrinated right the same way that they've been indoctrinated prior to coming into religion yeah so true. do you know yeah. what i mean that, that I, I there's indoctrination yeah. and brainwashing there i found know? it really difficult to uh i guess uh try and convey you know, if there was something to bring up with these individuals. Could you, yeah, like, could, could, exactly. So could you imagine going to these countries where they've never heard of the gospel being preached to them and going and explaining them to them the authentic gospel, the authentic walk of Christ on the earth, Yeah. 
right? Explaining to them how he died for our sins and how, um, you know, if they're baptized under the Holy Spirit, they can receive eternal salvation according to following, following his commandments, you know, and having that relationship with him. Yeah. You know, um, following after Christ. And could you imagine now approaching someone with a religious spirit, going to someone who's a part of these Christianity sects, and then trying to preach to them the truth after they already had known who Christ is, yeah. they know his walk, but they've been twisted in, do- in areas of critical areas of salvation. Yeah. That, that is so deep. That, that's it's so deep. That's man, hard, man. You've got, to try, you've got to try and rewire, right? Rewire, like, yeah. Yeah. 30, 40 years of programming from these people. Yep. Right, yeah. and how are you going to do that within 10 minutes of meeting these people and having a conversation? It's so deep. Yeah, you know, and that and that's what the uh, that's the highly highly skilled um, masters of deception, the Jesuit order, right? What they've done to the, the churches and how they've uh, infiltrated, you know, the seminary colleges and how all these people learn. Yeah, and it's, it's dangerous to people's salvation, you know. But especially, especially, um, yeah, because what I was going to say as well is that. These people in these countries that miss out um, on hearing the gospel, a lot of these countries are third world countries as well, or could be third world countries. Yeah. Right? Um, because we know that modern religion and the preaching of Christ, uh, you know, in terms of religion, is a very westernized thing as well. Or how do you say, it's very preached in the western world, right? That's true. The yeah. knowledge and accessibility to the most high level God is very publicized, but obviously in the wrong way. Yeah. Right? So it's handed to you on a plate of deception with poison in it. But if you go to these cunt, right? So so what I'm trying to say is whoever conceives and receives the knowledge of Christ through modern day Christianity also receives the same spirits behind that. You know what I mean? Western world also caught up in a lot of the Western, Western spirits, you know, like spirits of... Pride, you know, all of that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Spirits of debate and contention. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you go to a lot of these third world countries, a lot of these people in built have the knowledge of God. Perhaps they have the knowledge of God rooted inside of them already. That's you know right, what I mean? Yeah. And they just need to have their eyes and ears open to that, and they don't have as much spiritual bondage compared not, to. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because their ways of life are authentic. God, godly um, ways of life. Yeah, so spot on, I could man. be wrong. I could nah, be wrong. So but... spot on because they're not tied to the Western values that, that have been taught in society. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though it's trying to infiltrate its way into those and penetrate its way into those uh, facets of society that aren't totally Westernized and brainwashed. Yeah. They still have that, like, you know, that God within them. They're still very family orientated. Uh, they come from a place of love. Uh, they've been less brainwashed by the television by the exactly. radio they don't have exactly. the radio on every time they turn on the car and uh, the news presenter isn't shoving uh, <laughs> the news down their throat every, every half an propaganda. hour propaganda propaganda you know what I mean yeah uh, you know some of these villages some of these villages um, South America uh, good family values um, uh, I'm sure parts of maybe Asia uh you know, of course, Africa, you know, um, yeah. bases on, on, on the earth, you know, even some of these indigenous communities, you know, you know just such, such uh, beautiful, authentic people, you know. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Even though some of the places I've traveled to uh, here, they're not, not been too, uh, uh, too rural indigenous communities, but, you know, far out from, from, you know, the city, and you just meet some of the most authentic and loving uh, indigenous people, you know, from from 100%. where we are here in Australia, one hundred percent. And then it's like you come to the cities, and I experienced this firsthand uh, from a testimony from a brother from Torres Island, Torres uh, Thursday Island, in the Torres Strait Islanders. Um, oh yeah, that's right at the top. Yeah. yeah, right at the top. And he was saying when he comes to the city, he sees a lot of soulless people, and, and I totally resonate with where he's coming from. And um, yeah, I saw I, I lost my train of thought, but. You know, living in such a uh, designated part of, of, you know, Australia, and then coming back, you know, to the cities and, and 
you can see how how he must how you must feel. Like, yeah, it must be such a uh, uh, something you can't just close your eyes to. Nah, and, and when you're up there, that's what I was gonna say. It's a very raw thing to experience the love and spirit of God inside of you. It's a very raw thing. It's not really something you can just find in a religious denomination or find in a certain doctrine, so to speak. You know what I mean? Obviously, we know that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you receive his spirit through baptism, you 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 receive that. But I do feel like it's it's a process of time and it's yeah. it's it's isolation from these cities and isolation from certain um uh you know people and places and and especially if you're being taught wrong mm. especially if you're a part of a religious sect that's got um Christ certain Christ like values that aren't present that's that's very very a very dangerous thing you know and this is where, see, religion... Because who's it all, all focused around? Yeah, exactly. It's all focused around Christ. That's exactly. Right. And religion becomes... So you have this religious spirit that is consuming the globe, perhaps, and especially the Western world, and it almost becomes a laughing stock, a laughing stock of... Because um, when people... Of, of the way, of the way, of the, the truth, way, you know? Right. Yeah. Right? Because when people think religion, they think of the religious spirit. Yeah. They think of the, the people that are, um, you know, indoctrinated by a lot of these churches. But they don't realize Christ, like, he's the frequency. He, he's the, God is a spirit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's spiritual. Yeah. You know? He changes you from the inside out. through, And then you operate through his frequency. That's why, that's how you get, like, you know, uh, different terminologies. People say, oh, you know, this person vibrates on a higher level. Yeah, it's like these, these vibes that these persons because they're operating in a frequency of, of exactly. love you know, exactly they're, they're operating within these frequencies you have people who are on low vibrational energy um, yeah same sort of thing because it's yeah. a spiritual frequency that they're under that's why you can that's why you can feel people's you know uh, spirits that they're harboring their aura well, you know? yeah even if these, this, this person might be full of knowledge and, and you know you can still if he's harboring that's something it. on the inside it's very easy for someone to to gauge that, you know. That's like um, even I don't know if you remember back in the day, uh, taking it back to the world when you used to go on clubs, right? Clubbing, and you used to feel the, <laughs> you know, you used to feel, you know, the eyes and the ears all over the eyes all over you, you know. I was feeling, yeah. <laughs> you know, especially you know, <laughs> us men can relate to this with the women, you know. Like we used to feel like, you know, obviously. Um, you know, being a part of the world, I, you know, we rebuke these times and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, like you used to feel when, when it was really on, so to speak, when all the fish were biting, so to speak, you know, because there's some sort of spiritual, when we speak about it now, we, we, we realize that it's some sort of spiritual frequency that's behind yeah. the, what we're feeling in the club and, and the vibes and the aura and the ambience is, is I think, good, appropriate word. Yeah, yeah, the ambience you know? of the atmosphere. Yeah. And it's the same if you go to uh, like a sports game, right? Yeah. When you get a multitude, tens of thousands of people, you know, 50,000 people at a game, 100,000 people, right? And, and, and you're just feeling like, you know, there's, there's, real, there's real aggression and there's real, um, you know, there's passion, you know? This is all spiritual. It's all spiritual frequencies. All people that are like there for the uh, the same cause, right? But exactly. The people getting fired up and angry, and then like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. That's it. But yeah, I know what you're saying. There's all like a, a spiritual uh, basis on the underlines of, of basically everything, and then when you come uh, into the knowledge of all these things, you actually realise that um, yeah, it's it's spiritual things being played out in the physical being manifested in the in the physical which are, are happening in the spiritual that's exactly right that's exactly right um but yeah i can only see the father shaking his head for everything that's unfolding right now in the world in terms of the uprising in religion and you know, like yeah. I was saying, I've been saying to you so much, you know, a tree by its fruit. And 
we're in testing times now and we are we all have to realize man like yeah the most high is such a loving merciful yeah oh, man he's so patient you know he's so patient with everything that goes on and i'll count myself blessed every single day that i wake up and just so grateful for his mercy and that i'm still here with the chance to to you know grow one step closer every single day yeah because yeah. um I'm not. one of these days you know you never know it could be your last so that's why we always have to be grateful for yeah. our time here and yeah these, these times are very very serious that we're in making the most of every yeah I'm on to that and making the most of every single opportunity that we have every single day to serve him with our mind our body our whole, our soul with all of our strength and all of our might and you know no matter where we are no matter you know what predicament we find ourselves in because we just never know when our soul's going to be cold and our time's going to be up. And if we die in a place of bitterness, if we die in a place of contention or, you know, or heresy or, um, you know, then, then we can't, how can we obtain eternal life in those moments? You know, we, we just have to be constantly working on finding inner peace and, um, yeah. and keeping his commandments that way through the inner peace and the love that we've, we feel emanating from us that aura that is from us you know that in that peace and contentment you know? yeah if we're and, operating under his frequency yeah you know what i mean and and this is where no satan can't get in from any angle he can't get in because it's overpowering that frequency inside of us is just too overpowering you know yep. in those moments of pure peace um you can't have you know not even a person who comes at you screaming at you We'll, we'll throw you off course, you know, mm. and we'll take you away from that perfect love of God. So, yeah. Very well said, you know. Like, like Paul says, right, redeeming the days for the times are short. I might be paraphrasing, but... Yeah, I might. Um, for the times that we're in right now, 